Okay, guys, let's continue building out our CRUD application. The next function I want to implement is retrieving one individual post. And so let's define a function for that. So here I'll call this uh, uh, get post. Keep in mind that this is singular. So I call this get post, whereas to retrieve all posts, it's get posts. But like I said, the name of these functions don't actually matter. It's just more for, for you, more for readability. And the decorator is going to look like this. And so this is based off of that slide I already showed you. So it's going to be a get method. And then here, the URL is going to be slash posts ID, right? Because the user is going to provide us the ID of the specific post that they're interested in. And so that's going to get embedded in the URL. So they'll send a get request to slash post slash and then whatever ID. So if they want to see the information for uh, post one, they'll pass in a value of one. And what this is actually referred to, the proper terminology for this is that this is called a path parameter. So this ID field represents a path parameter, and this parameter happens to represent the ID of a specific post the user is interested in seeing. And so what we can do is Fast API will automatically extract this ID, and then we can pass it right into our function. So now our function has access to whatever value was in that URL right there. And so if we want to, I can do a quick print of ID, and then we'll just return some hard-coded data. So I'll just say data. Actually, we'll call this, uh, how about post underscore detail. I'll say this is the post you're interested in. Or even better, what I can do is uh, we'll change this to an F string, and I'll just say here is post, and then we can just pass an ID. So let's save that. We'll go to Postman, and what we want to do is we want to create a new post, but let's create it in our collection. So I'm going to go in there, select Add Request, give it whatever name you want. I'll say get one post. And then for the URL, just copy the get posts URL. And then we want to pass in the ID that we're interested in. So we just do a slash. And then in this case, I'm going to get the post with an ID of two. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we've hard coded one of our posts to have an ID of two. So I know that's always going to be there. And then we could just try sending this and see what happens. So it says post detail. Here is post and then post number two. So it looks like we were successfully able to extract the ID, uh, the path parameter that was passed into the specific URL that the user sent a request to. So we now have access to that. At that point, we can just find whichever um, entry in my post has that specific ID. Now we have to implement the logic for actually getting that post. And so there's many different ways of doing this. And I'm telling you right now, this is probably not the best way of doing this. I'm not really even a Python expert. I'm sure there's much better ways of grabbing this information. However, uh, keep in mind, the code's going to be changed later on once we start working with the database. So this, at this point, is just basic Python logic. Uh, and I do want to keep, I do want you guys to keep in mind that this may not be best practice for uh, the best way of retrieving an individual post. But I'm just going to create a simple function. And uh, it's going to be called find post. So this is how you find a post by an ID. So, the, so we'll pass in an ID in this function to retrieve the post. And what we'll do is we'll iterate over the my post. So we'll say 4p in my posts, and we'll say if p, so p represents the specific post that we're iterating over. So if this specific post has an ID, which equals the ID that was passed into the function, then we'll return p, we'll return that specific post. And then at this point, we can call this function. So I'm going to remove that print statement and say post equals find underscore post ID. And then for this, we can just remove this and just return post. So let's save this. Let's go to back to Postman and let's try this out. And it looks like I got an error. So something happened. And let's actually take a look at our code. Well, guys, I think I found the issue. So the reason why we keep getting none, right? If I keep sending, hitting send, it says none. And what I did was I just printed out the post to see what we got. And uh, it actually just prints out none. So it, for some reason, we're unable to find post. And I think I know exactly why. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a print of ID again. And this is going to teach us an important lesson. So I'm going to send another request. And it prints out two. However, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to get the 
type of ID. So I forget how to do that. I think it's the type. I think I could just do type in Python. So I'm going to figure out what is the actual type of ID. And now if I send this request again, right, you could see that the type is actually a string and not an integer. And so when we pass this check-in where we say if P uh, ID, so if we get the ID field and compare it to the ID that we pass in, it's never going to equal that because one's an integer, the other one's a string, they're never going to be equal. So the first thing that we actually have to do is before we call this function, we have to convert it to an integer. So I can just say int, that's going to convert it to an int, save that, and then at this point, if I send this, it should now work. Look at that. So keep in mind, guys, anytime we um, have a path parameter, it's always going to be returned as a string, even if it represents an integer or a number, we always have to manually convert it ourselves. So don't forget to do that. Now, there is one little issue with what we're doing. So everything's working. And if I actually change this to a one, we should get a different post. So everything's working great. However, what happens if I type this? Well, let's hit send. Well, we get an error, right? Because we're trying to convert this to an int and it's going to throw an error. And then instead of sending back a nice, you know, built-in response, yeah, we just get an internal server error and the user has no idea what exactly is wrong. So we want to provide it feedback. So how can we perform some kind of validation to ensure that whatever data that's passed into this path parameter can actually be properly converted to an integer? Well, we can perform validation with fast API. So here for ID, what we can do is we can say, I want this to be an integer. So what it's going to do is it's first of all going to validate that it can be converted to an integer and then it'll automatically convert it to an integer for us. So we no longer have to convert this ourselves. So here I could just pass an ID because this will make sure that it's already converted. And so now if I save this and I change this back to a number first, let's make sure that everything's working. So it automatically converted it to an integer. And now if I pass in, you know, a string, it's now going to throw an error. It's going to say for a path parameter of ID, you can see that this value is not a valid integer. And so now the front end, has a good way of understanding what they did wrong. And you know, this can be anything, right? So if you wanted this to to be a string, right? We can have this automatically get validated as a string and convert it into a string so that uh, if they do actually send a string, no errors, right? And then if they tried to, actually, even if you put in a number, it's not gonna throw an error because any number can actually be converted into a string. But we want an integer, so I'm gonna change this back to an integer. And then we'll just hard code this as two. Perfect. Make sure you save your request. And so now we've now implemented our third function within our CRUD app. So we've just got two more. We got to handle updating and deleting posts, but we've got all getting all posts, creating a post and then getting an individual post. And you'll see that uh, for the last two, it's pretty much the same thing, right? We just have to define our specific decorator and then define the logic for actually creating and deleting a post from that array or updating uh, a post as well.